Welcome to the Mindset Playground. Whether you're thinking about starting your own business or just looking to become inspired, award-winning entrepreneur Lou Ann Hunt is here putting into practice what she teaches every day. She's a certified Canfield trainer in the Success Principles and Diabetes Prevention Program Lifestyle Coach. So please welcome the host of the Mindset Playground, Lou Ann Hunt. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mindset Playground, where you're going to get your daily dose of positivity. And I'm your host, Luann Hunt, and I want you to know that you are always just one decision away from a completely different life. Now, I promise that if you watch the Mindset Playground, it will never be dull or boring. You will Mm -hmm. laugh, you may cry, but no matter what, you will leave with a dose of positivity. So today I have a special guest and she's actually a very good friend of mine. We have been friends for a very long time. I'm so excited to play with Teresa Realm on the playground today. Now she's the creator of an amazing company and it's named Successful Image Client Relationships Management. And she's also known by many of her friends, including myself, as the queen of networking. In fact, I met her at a networking event and she actually did an amazing talk, a TED talk about just that. And it was called Networking for Success. And she has a great story to share with us today. So please welcome to the playground, Teresa Riam. Good morning. Awesome to see you. I'm very excited to be here. I'm excited to have you on the playground. It's so nice to, yeah. you know, just play with one of my good friends on the yeah. playground. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say over 15 years we've been friends, eh? Have we at really? Least. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't remember what networking event we met at. Would that have been uh, WEF, Women's Economic Forum? Mm, I think it was before that. Oh, it was, wow. do you remember the old Burke's Jewelry Store downtown Windsor? Yeah. It was the floor above that. Oh. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Yeah, that's, I think that's where we met. It wasn't that, um, I can't even remember the name of it now, but it was, it was pretty amazing. It was an amazing event. It was the City Grill, I believe, when we went. City Grill. Pardon? The City Grill, I believe. Ah, yes, that was it. Yeah. It's not the City Grill anymore. Yeah. (laughs) But anyway, it doesn't really matter because I see you at so many of these networking events and I'm so, so excited to talk to you about that because it's so important when it comes to any business or anything, really, you got to yep. let people know that you're out there, including yep. even this show. I have to make sure that I network so that people will know <laughs> about the show. Yeah. Yeah. So the name of your company is so cool. It's called Successful Image. And yeah. how did you come up with the idea for Successful Image? Well, I was always in sales and marketing um, and I love sales and marketing. I read all kinds of marketing books and uh, my favorite thing to do, one of my favorite things to do is read and learn. Anyways, um, all the books you read, tapes you listen to, uh, Zig Ziglar, Joe Girard, all the best of the best said, in order to be successful, you need to follow up. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm a consumer. I have an insurance agent and a real estate agent and a car dealership, et cetera. None of them follow up with me. So they know they're supposed to, they're not doing it. I need to find a way to do it for them and take it off their plate because most Ah. people in sales know, yeah, they know it's important, but time, it's very time consuming. So I thought, okay, I need to find a way to do that. And, uh, I, uh, sat down with my entrepreneur husband, Jack, and, uh, I was, he'll tell you it was his idea, but it was my idea. Luann, it was (laughs) true story. Well, and, I know, and, and our yeah. and our guys, both of our guys, are like bros. So yes, they're like they the are. best yeah. of. They're like brothers from another mother. They so, are. Yeah. yeah, they get <laughs> so along I'm, really well. Yeah, yeah. Have to agree with and, you. He will probably yeah. say it's his his idea. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's okay. And, yeah, but I mean, honestly, I couldn't do it without him. So sat down and right. you know had this idea and put it on a pen to paper and figured out how we could do this, and um, the successful image came because we are all about helping you with your successful image that's where the name came from right well that's cool good because at the end of the day everything we do appears to come from 
you, whoever the client is. So um, what we do for them is we send out on their behalf, and again, it all appears to be their effort, their thank you cards, their birthday cards, their Christmas cards, anything after point of sale to maintain that relationship. And what it does is it keeps you top of mind. It helps increase repeat and referral business, right? So it shows your clients that you really appreciate them. So um, we take it off their plate. We kind of put it on automatic pilot and uh, help them with their follow-up. We're all about follow-up. So a lot of my clients are real estate agents, insurance, um, financial, car dealerships, that kind of thing. So uh, we've actually been doing this now for almost 20 years, Luann. Yeah. Wow. A little, uh, Already. Over, a little over 20 years. Yeah. And we've got clients across Canada, which I'm very proud of and took a lot of blood, sweat and tears to get to that point. But um, yeah, I'm very proud of it. Very proud of, of what we do. I love what we do because we send cards to people. We make people feel good. What yeah. a great business, right? I know. And nowadays, I mean, who gets a card in the mail anymore? It's like such a rarity. You exactly. know, I remember the days when we used to get like all our bills and cards and, you know, everything would just sit on the counter until you had time to open it. But exactly. nowadays, yeah, nowadays when you get a card in the mail and you know it's a card, you it's know, special. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And especially yeah. when it's, you know, personalized to yeah. you. Yeah. And, you know, all, your all personalized. Yeah. yeah. We deal first class yeah. mail only. It's all personalized. And, and uh, so, you get home from a busy day, you look at your mail, like you said, and you always open your first class mail. So that's yeah. a nice thing about it is, you know, your client saw it and held it in their hand. And uh, let's let's face it, you get a nice card, especially in the day of easy email technology, and you get a nice card and effort was put in, it means a lot. So yeah. it does, you know, and that's so true. And you know that you're not just sending me a card so that I'll buy your product. No, nope. you're sending me a card to basically say, you know, I'm thinking about you. Um, thank I you for the you. sale. I appreciate you. Yeah. yeah, how true is that? And yeah. how often do we get that nowadays? You know, just somebody reaching out and saying, I appreciate you for, you yeah. know, knowing, liking, and trusting me because that's what Absolutely. it's all about, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And yeah. And that doesn't both, happen uh, overnight. That doesn't happen. No, overnight. It's time to no we're that. both definitely, uh, the people that love the marketing, you know, and like yeah. you said, the fall, the fortunes in the follow-up and yeah, that's my tagline fortunes in the follow-up. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that the truth? That's so true. Yeah. You know, yeah. cause if you go and you buy a new car or whatever, and yeah. you don't hear from the person again, unless there's a problem with your vehicle and mm -hmm. even then you don't talk to your salesperson you talk yeah. to the service department yeah so that's so yeah. true and then when yeah. i go to buy a new car hmm who am i gonna get to maybe go and talk to about a new car right yeah so if that person's been in touch with you for all those years um you're gonna go to them first because you're gonna remember them and you're gonna say hey this actually i had a, uh, someone say to me I deal with such and such real estate agent and I will not deal with anybody else because he sends me a birthday card every year. And so, yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. So it, it, it works. That's so true. And let's face it, you bought a house or your car, how much thousands and thousands of dollars did you spend? You can certainly drop them a $3 card, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Take the time out and do that. And if you can't, you call Teresa. That's right. I'm here. I'll help you. <laughs> I love I that. Help, I can help you with that. <laughs> you know, because I'm busy. I'm busy. Yes. And, yeah. you know, I have shows to produce. So yep. I can call my good friend, Teresa, and say, hey, listen, yep. you know, can you do this for me? It's kind of like anything when it comes to nowadays, you know, having a, a, a personal assistant or anything. It's so, so mm -hmm. important. Yep. And that's basically what you are. Is in a way yeah assistant. yeah and now we do we do strictly cards that's our niche and um uh just the cards we take off your plate again follow up first class direct mail you know if you're busy actually i have another client you just made me think of it he's in florida all winter and he says you're sending my cards out well i'm away in florida and they think i'm working working hard doing all this but i'm in florida playing golf and you're making me look good so oh it's, it's, it's fun to get those it's fun to get that feedback i love getting the feedback that people tell yeah. me and they hear from their clients. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. 
And I know that I've done business with uh, some people and I get cards and from them, you know, just out of the blue Easter cards, yeah. <laughs> like who sends out Easter cards now? Right. Thank you yeah. cards, um, Christmas cards for my birthday, yeah, you know, all amazing. those things. And it's, it's really nice to, to get those messages. Like I said, especially if you're having a bad day and then you come home and you know, you all of a sudden have this card in the mail. So it's great. It's really great. Yeah. Yeah. I say so we make people smile all over the world. <laughs> I like yes, that. Yes. Absolutely. So like how did you come up with uh the whole concept? Like I know that you were always into marketing and stuff. Yeah. But let's back yeah. up a little bit. What did you do before you did this okay. actual at home <clears throat> business? Well, I did a number of things. Um used to run a restaurant actually many years ago with my husband and said I'd never work with my husband again, yet here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but that was different. When you're working in a restaurant together, you're working together. It's stressful. But I do my thing, he does his, I'm out selling and he's the guy behind the scenes, uh, behind the computer, which he prefers. Um, so we work together, but we don't work together. So anyways, so did that for a number of years and I was the sales and marketing uh, manager at uh, Windsor Squash and Fitness Health Club uh, for a number of years and honestly one of my favorite jobs in the whole world. I loved working there um, and uh, came up with this idea. Um, after I started having a family, I had to reassess some things and it was taking a lot of time. Um, so I thought, well, you know what? I want to work from my home. So came up with the idea and kind of started the ball rolling and uh, the rest is history. Oh, that's great. So say I'm a corporation or a company yep. and what do you do? What's your mindset? What do you do to prepare for a meeting? Like what do, what do you tell me? So you walk in and how do you solve, how do you solve a problem for me? Okay. Um, so what I, so actually a lot of times what I do is um, when I meet somebody at a networking event or somewhere, I add them to my list and I'll send them a couple of cards. It was nice to meet you. Hi, how you doing? Happy spring, whatever. And I'll send them a couple of cards and then I call them and you always get through because they know me. They feel like they know me now, even if they only met me once. And um, or or if I know somebody I really want to get get to have a meeting with, I'll start sending them cards. So when I do do call, I get through to that person almost every time because they're like, Teresa Ram, I know that name. Why is she sending me cards? I want to talk to that girl. So, <laughs> so it, 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 it does. It's not, it's um, helps you not have to do cold calling. It's a little bit warm, right? right. Um, so anyways, then I would meet with them and um, depending on which which industry I'm meeting with, I would let them know how we can help them. For example, um, a car dealership, they're going to know the person's birthday because they've got their license. So how special is that, oh, right? To send yeah. a birthday card. Um, not everybody's going to have that information, but I mean, um, if you do utilize it, I said, do you know right. their spouses, their wedding anniversary? Do you know their spouse's birthday, the kids? Cause let's face it. If you're in this industry, whatever that industry is, and you're doing it as a career, you have to think about down the road. How am I going to, uh, they say it costs six times more to get a new client than to keep the clients that you have. So how am I going to go out there and get these new people while making sure that the people I already are, I've sold to and our, our clients remain clients. So, um, yeah, so that's talk to them about that and, most of the time they say, you know what, that's a great idea and it's not that expensive. So let's give it a try. Yeah, that's a great idea. And like you said, the follow-up is always in the fort or the fortune is always in the follow-up. I said it backwards. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, yeah, mm -hmm. it's so true. So following up and, you know, how many times people should be following up and things like that. <laughs> because when you first meet someone, you have to have several follow-ups and there's so many people that don't take the time to do it. Yeah. And I think that all yeah. of the gurus, I'm going to call them gurus, like our <laughs> gurus that we are mentors, everybody that we have dealt with over the years, listening to all of their, you know, talks and how they should be running business and things like that. Uh, they always, always 
tell us that we should follow up and yeah. that it's so, so important. And, you know, even if you're on social media, which is the way that everybody does it nowadays, when people, <clears throat> when people join your group or whenever they join you or they ask you to be their friend, like, let's talk about that for a second. You know, again, when somebody asks you to be their friend and you add them to your friend list, it's so, so important to follow up with them to, you know, to build a relationship. Yes, it would be great if you can maybe ask them for their address and send them a card once in a while. And I'm sure you've done that as well. Is yeah. People that you've met on social media. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And generally their information is on social media anyway, right? True. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. I apologize I for that. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's public information. So it's easy to get somebody's address, especially if it is a business. One of the things I do like to do once I've met somebody is go to LinkedIn. I really like LinkedIn as a, a business uh, platform to follow up with people. And uh, you can get a lot of information there. True. That's so true. And people will only do business with you if they know, like, and trust you. 100%. So yep. even if they are the cold calls or the cold <laughs> contacts. Yeah. Everybody warms up pretty quick when they get a, you know, a card. <laughs> true. Very true. Yeah. So even if you're not using it just as a client relationship tool, it's definitely turning your cold market into a warm market really yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Makes for a, lot sure. easier, a lot easier to approach those people, right? Yeah. Yes, for sure. And, they think that you're genuine and that you're interested. So, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah. So I know that you were known as the queen of networking. So <laughs> I forgot my tiara. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I do notice that you're wearing your scarf and that's I, like a signature for you. I like <laughs> my she scarf. She has so many scarves. How many scarves do, do you have? I do. I have no idea. Lots of scarves and lots of shoes. <laughs> I know. Well, you yeah. don't have to worry about the scarf fitting or your shoes fitting. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, they so, fit there, but yeah, that's funny. No matter what year it is, they fit. They, they look yep. great. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I think that's kind of your signature, which is cool because I yeah. love your scarves. So, thank you. Um, <laughs> I love my scarves too. <laughs> I had to bring it up because I That's remember talking to you on the phone and I said, so I'm sure you're going to come with a scarf. <laughs> you know it. I know. The first thing I picked out and built the, built the uh, outfit around that. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> and um, so back to the networking. Okay. So I know that uh, you have a lot of uh, networking groups that you belong to and things like that. So we're going to actually get into that when we come back. Okay. But for now, we have to take a quick break. Okay. So you're watching the Mindset Playground. I'm your host, Luann Hunt, and we'll be right back. We'll talk more about networking with Teresa Riem as soon as we come back. So don't go away. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mindset Playground. We're having so much fun on the playground today. My good friend and I, Teresa Riom, and we're talking about networking and how important it is. But first, I wanna ask Teresa because she was known for so long as the queen of networking. So what did they mean by that, Teresa? I know I met you at a networking event, but how did you start getting into the whole networking thing? So I was, I'm trying to think back. So I was, I was, first of all, that's really how I truly built my business was through networking, okay. through the, through our card process, but also through networking. I was at a network event and I ran into a, a, a gentleman sitting next to me and he's become a really good friend, Mark Morris. And uh, he said, you know, if you like networking, he goes, you should come to my B&I meeting, which stands for Business Networking International. And uh, I said, well, tell me about it. And he did. And I said, my gosh, that sounds like such a fantastic idea. Take me there. Right. So the next week I went as his guest and I joined 
and immediately became visitor host and was president a number of times and um, a lot of different roles. I was with them for over 10 years and it's basically structured networking. So you, you, it's, you have a, a president, vice president and treasurer, you come together uh, generally around 25 business professionals. They only take one from each profession. And again, you build relationships with these people in the room there no like and trust right there's that phrase yep. again and yes. um <clears throat> that and they get to know like and trust you and really understand your business because you get to do a presentation on it you do one-to-ones with people so you really get to get into the meat and potatoes of your business so they can give you quali- quality good quality referrals so um that's how i got into it and uh, like i said I was with them for so long because it's just such a great idea and then from there there were other uh networking groups i belonged to and i just got into that that world i guess and um i tried to attend as many networking events as i could i usually at least three a month maybe four so one a week and uh you know it takes effort and uh you have to you know be disciplined enough to get there and you have to remember um oh you know how well i'm gonna add this in the other way i did too was through volunteering i'm a huge oh, okay. advocate of volunteering in the community and um was always out at events but at volunteering and people would say i see you everywhere you know you're at these events you're volunteering you're doing this you're doing that the other thing i did a lot is i always found the camera guy and uh, <laughs> even though i don't think i'm particularly photogenic i always found the camera guy at a networking event, at a uh, charity event, whatever, and got my picture taken. In fact, at one time, do you remember Snapped? Yes. The, the, uh, yeah. Every Are they time Snapped. Is this anymore? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I haven't we'll seen it around for a while. But um, it was a joke in our family that uh, when Snapped came in, Maddie would run and grab it and look for how many times I, I showed up in the Snap magazine. <laughs> And, uh, but that was part of it, but honestly, be getting out there, getting out there. And I did have a couple clients say to me too, Teresa, you're always out there <clears throat> doing good in the community. You're somebody I want to deal with, which I take as a huge compliment. Huge. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And that's yeah. so, so important. Yeah. So it kind of just grew from there. People started seeing me everywhere, seeing me everywhere. And it's like, oh, you're the queen of networking. And so I said, well. Oh, Okay, and it stuck. <laughs> yeah, and I it did. Very, it... I was very, very flattered by that. I will tell you one thing. Um, if I said the name Donna Messer, do you know who I'm talking about? <clears throat> she was the true queen of networking. Oh, she was okay. the true queen of networking. And I met her many years ago. She's now passed um, a couple of years ago from cancer. Amazing lady, amazing lady. I met her originally at um, the casino, Caesars Windsor. She did a one day um, symposium on networking. And it was the first time I heard the concept of lateral networking. And I thought, what, what does that mean? And, she's, and she uh, talked about how people need to connect on a common ground. <clears throat> and mm-hmm. I thought that makes a lot of sense to me. So you and I, as we've gotten to know each other, we found thing, commonalities about each other. For example, we're oh. the same age we're almost born in the same month like a lot of things that we found out we had in common and that's how our relationship grew right and so um she talked about how you have to find a common ground and then you build from there and i talk about i talk about that in the ted talk i did and i i give the example of um if i'm an insurance salesman and i walk into a room full of people and Nobody wants to talk insurance. They're going to be running the other way. There's Teresa, the insurance salesman. But if I come in that room and I'm genuinely interested in you and I find out, for example, you love baseball and I love baseball and we talk baseball and we build a relationship on that. Now right. I, I, right now I've gotten to know, like, and trust you. Now I want to hear what you have to say about insurance. So that's right. kind of how that works. Yeah. So lateral networking, um, is really something that I learned from Donna Master. She was the true queen of networking. So um, I was very, very complimented when people started to call me that. 
So can I tell a little story? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Go ahead. It's about when we first met. Yeah. So and when we first met, everybody said to me, you know, you got to meet Teresa because she is the queen of networking. You got to <laughs> meet her. You got to meet her. And it was so funny because the very first time that I met you was at that event that we were talking about the upper floor of the Brooks building. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so what was so funny is we were all sitting around the table and we were sitting at dinner and for a long time, I don't even know how long it was. I mean, it had to have been months that I started um, hearing, you got to meet Teresa, you got to meet Teresa. And it was so <laughs> funny because we just weren't in the same circles at the time or we were and we didn't realize that we were it's very possible mm -hmm. and uh so i was sitting at the table and this is a true story so one of the girls said to me uh because you had gotten up and i think i think we all got up and said who we were oh yes and yeah. uh and um i said to the girl who was sitting next to me that's Teresa real <laughs> Like you were already famous, you know, by the time I met you. And she's like, yeah, because you had gotten up and said that your name was Teresa Realm. And, right. and, and I was like, oh, everybody tells me I got to meet her. And uh, so I was just so excited. So I said to the girl and I, I think, oh, geez, I should know who it is. But now the name has escaped me. Who it was, who was that I was talking to? Yeah, it was a long time ago. And um, she said, uh, I said, will you like, will, will you introduce us? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> you know, because by you're the queen, right? I'm going to like, <laughs> I'm meeting the queen. So, yeah. uh, it was funny. So I said, you know, like, will you introduce us? And she's like, oh yeah, sure. No problem. So, um, it was Kathy Vincent. See the name just popped oh, in my yeah, head. Yeah. Kathy, yeah. yeah. And, um, hi Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she said, yeah, sure. I'll introduce you, you know? And so yeah. they didn't think it was a big deal, but I certainly thought it was a big deal. And I remember, I remember specifically meeting you and like, you didn't know who I was or anything, but yeah, we just started chatting what? and yeah. I was actually in sales, Yes, which I still am with a yes. product. And I had just started okay. and you said, you said, well, I'll have a party for you. Oh, and you were yeah. like, do you remember? You were yes, my I, first party. Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 I, was, I love helping. I, I do. I love helping people and I love um, entrepreneurs and I love people who, who try to work hard and get to get where they're going. And if I can help them out, I will. And I, I was doing that every summer. I'd have a party at my home and, and feature somebody. Um, one of, one of my friends who was a young entrepreneur get starting out and just helped them get their feet wet. And I hope, I think you did well at the party. And uh, yeah, I, of course I remember that. Yeah. I've done it for a few, a few of my, women friends. Yeah. Yeah. And it was great. And it was so helpful, like you said. And what I really enjoyed the most about meeting you is the fact that you gave such great at business advice. You know what I mean? Like, um, like just like how I did and how I could change things to present a little better, like mm -hmm. that type of thing. Like you're, you're a straight shooter and I like that. You know, that's one thing about our friendship is you're definitely, a, you know, you're a good friend and you're a straight shooter and um, I can beat you at some games that we play. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Luann has introduced uh, my husband and my daughter and I to some really good board games. And honestly, Maddie and I still play them all the time. Yeah, <laughs> good. I know. Yeah. That's a true friendship when you can yeah. like, inter when you can introduce your friends to board games. And yeah, so, we have yeah. fun. We have fun. We have fun. We definitely have fun. Yeah. So now well, that's one other really side sweet. That I, I feel I feel a little bit embarrassed by what you Why? just told the story because I'm just Teresa. <laughs> oh. I don't know, but anyways, I I uh, I'm happy to help. No, but 
no, you shouldn't feel that way because you were just Teresa when I met you. I yeah. was so concerned that, you know, I had put you up on this pedestal and that you wouldn't be interested in meeting me. But yeah. when I did actually get introduced to you, you were just Teresa. And yeah. that's, that's part of the whole part about the lateral networking that I'm yeah. sure that that lady was talking about that Donna was talking about. So before we move on to our last segment, I want to ask you about, because I know that you've done this, you've come in to my classroom oh, yeah. actually, yeah. and you've done a presentation mm -hmm. to my class, to my students. So can we talk about that presentation? What did you put together in that presentation? Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was, I love doing that. That was a lot of fun. Um, so, uh, into one of your marketing classes and right. talk, the kids gave them some pointers on how to network and how not to network. Um, and, uh, then we did a little networking exercise and I broke the class into about groups of five or six kids, I believe, and, um, gave them, I think five questions. And they each had an opportunity to answer the questions and there were basic questions like where's your favorite place to vacation do you have a pet tell us something nobody knows about you g-rated <laughs> tell us something nobody knows about you and the conversation what it did was open up conversation that you wouldn't normally have with your classmates or these people sitting next to you in a meeting or whatever and get to know each other better and actually bond over some commonalities lateral networking and uh, they had a lot of fun and they got to know each other a little bit better that day and, and that was great that was great so i love to i've done it at rotary i've done it at st Clair university of windsor uh, b and i i've done it uh, i've gone around spoken about networking uh, at a number of places and of course the TED talk I did. So that was great. Now, do you want, do we have time to get into a few pointers on networking or? Absolutely. I was just going to ask you, so okay. what are some of the things that you could, you know, what are okay. some of the takeaways or the golden nuggets? Okay. Golden nuggets. Um, so first when you walk into a room, nobody likes to walk into a room full of strangers. It's intimidating. Um, so one one thing I tell people, be aware of your body language, because if you're standing there looking, you know, sad or arms crossed or what have you, are people going to want to approach you? You need to be approachable. Um, smile. A smile goes so far. A smi smile at people that makes you receptive, right? Right. Um, yeah. So body language and smile. And one of the things I learned from the um, man Dr. Ivan Meisner, a brilliant man who started BNI actually, is when you walk into a room, look for open circles. And what I mean by that is if you have, uh, say, two people, you know, face to face talking to each other, they look a little intense, don't approach them because they're having a, a conversation, an intense conversation. But you'll notice, and I've done this many times, it works. <clears throat> you'll see um, like semicircles of people, there'll be an opening in the circle. And that's their body language saying, come on and join us, right? Come into the conversation. And I'm always, <clears throat> when I go to these events, I act like a host. So I always look for the person who looks a little lost. And I call them over and say, come on over, you know, I'm Teresa, this is so-and-so, this. And it, it, so many people have been so grateful saying, thank you for doing that. Because I was, I was really right. nervous. And I actually had one lady tell me, um, she walked in the room she was so nervous she ran out went back to her car and cried oh and went home and that oh. just broke my heart it broke my heart when she told me that um i wasn't at that event or i would have called her over but uh, yeah. anyways that just, that always stuck with me so anyways look for open circles smile be aware of your body language is one of them um <clears throat> again the lateral networking huge you know, um, sometimes if I'm going to an event and I know somebody I, I've been wanting to meet is going to be there, I'll Google them and I'll go to their LinkedIn profile and I'll look at, you know, their history and learn about them and see if there's something, one, we have in common and our two, it, it helps you break the ice in regard to conversation. And uh, so it's a good idea to go to their profile, see what they're into, what they've been into, what their hobbies are, whatever you can then connect with them on that. 
Um, so uh, I like to use, uh, I always say use open-ended questions, not a question they can answer yes or no to, but the who, what, right. why, and where, how, so that you open them up to start talking. Um, so that's really important. Um, and you have to be an active listener. So you're actively listening for ways you can help them. You're not listening to respond. You're really listening to them and you're being authentic. You need to be authentic or people pick up on that. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> So, so what would you say for somebody who is actually going to a networking event? And like you said, they don't do, would you recommend that you go to, um, networking events alone or yeah. <laughs> with someone else? No, <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah, alone. And I'll tell you why, because if you walk in there with somebody else, they're your safe place and you're going to stay with them and talk to them all night. But if you walk into an event, and you're alone, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, circulate the room and you're gonna meet new people. And um, there, I, I, I really feel you should go alone. If you do go together, say, I'll meet you over there in an hour or whatever, but take off on your own. You will meet so many more people if you're on your own, really, truly. Yeah. Good oh, question. Cool. Good yeah. question. Cause I wouldn't have yeah, thought well, to say that, but yeah, I do feel strongly about that. Well, it's important because, you know, we're just coming off the pandemic and everything yeah. was online, as you know. And so it just makes a huge difference when it comes to networking now, because we're now getting back to, you know, in person. Well, thank goodness. Yes, <laughs> we need to do yeah. that. Very much so. And it's really interesting because more people want to be live than they do online. Yes, they and do. Yes, that's so, so true. So it is really important. And um, it's always good to know what I should do. Because if I'm kind of a shy person, yeah. or, you know, even though I'm not really that shy, as no, you know, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really that I know you might find that surprising. Yeah. But I don't know. And that's where the mindset comes in. So can yeah. we talk about that real quick? Because yes. this is the mindset playground. Yeah. And what kind of what kind of mindset should you put yourself into when it comes to, you know, going to one of these meetings or showing up at one of these networking meetings? Like what what kind of mindset should you have? It's like so, say for example, I just had a huge fight with my with my guy over something really silly. Yeah. And I'm just, yeah. So let's, let's talk about that. Let's put yourself in a, a good frame of mind. Okay. So, um, when you go to a networking event and I cannot emphasize this enough, you're not going there to sell. Do not sell. I was going to say that again. Do not sell at a networking event. And I know some people are going, what? No, yeah. you're there. You're there to build relationships. It's all about building a relationship and you should go with the mindset of how can I help you? How can I help you? It's not about you, me. It's about that other person and how you, how you can help them. So go in with a mindset of help being helpful and a mindset of it not being about you and a mindset of I'm not here to sell to anybody. That doesn't mean business might not come up in the conversation. That's what we're all there for. I'm sure it will be, but uh, it will come up and ask for their card and talk about their business, but you're about how can I help you? Yeah. Well, let's uh, take a few more pointers. We're going to do some, uh, also some probably things that you shouldn't do, not just yeah. what you should do, but let's talk yeah. about what you shouldn't do as well when we come back. Okay. So you're listening to the Mindset Playground and Teresa Realm is my special guest today, the queen of networking. And don't go away because we got some really cool stuff to finish off the show with. Hey everyone, we're so excited that you're joining us here today on the Mindset Playground. And I'm your host, Luann Hunt. And today my guest is known as the queen of networking. And she definitely earned that title because <laughs> she's done a lot of networking. And in fact, that's how she built her business, which is called the uh, Successful Image Client Relationships Management. Sorry, Teresa. 
Okay. I wanted to make sure I got it. I just know you as successful images. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I wanted to make sure I got the correct title. But anyway, as I was saying, or, or as we were saying, let's talk real quick about how you actually built your business so that it was, it's huge, right? You have mm -hmm. a nice client list yeah. and you have a lot of clients all over Canada. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. sure at one point you started from zero clients, like a lot of businesses do. So let's yeah. talk about your networking life. So truth, <laughs> when I left the health club, I took the list with me, <laughs> which I wasn't supposed to do. And I'm admitting it here. Uh, it was a long time ago, so I'm not worried about it. But I knew a lot of businessmen uh, who, businessmen and women who came in the club. And uh, I approached them and I said, you know, call them. Hey, it's Teresa from the club. And I had a very good reputation there. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and I said, I started my own business. Can I take 10 minutes of your time? And they all say, yeah, sure. So that's how I started, started. You know, it was never cold calling. It was always warm. And then as I explained earlier, um, with sending cards before I called people always got through and, uh, and it was kind of a warm call instead of a full out cold call, which is not fun for anybody, but in sales, you got to do it. Sometimes you got to do it. So then through that, through, um, and then networking, I grew it, took 20 years, 10 years of real hard pounding the pavement and, uh, you know, got to where we are today and very proud of that. Very proud of that. Hard work. You should be. Hard work yes. and persistence pay off. <laughs> yes. And yes. And you know what I'm going to say? You have to follow up. <laughs> uh, no, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Because you know what? We can't hear that enough. No. I'm telling you, everybody no. needs to be reminded yeah. over and over. So the fortune's in the follow up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, if you're going to do any type of business or not just business, folks, yes, any friends, yeah. making yeah. a new group of friends. And, you know, I can't tell you how many friends I have made, you know, even online, the yeah. online friends and people that are all coming on the Mindset Playground to, you know, share with me their experiences and things. I'm so blessed. I'm so lucky because I have so many great friends and I know that they're enjoying the Mindset Playground as well. So before we go, because we're, yep. this is our last segment, let's okay. talk about your TED talk, because oh. you know what? That's on my bucket list. Ah, oh. well, did you know that? No, I did not. I did not know <laughs> that. And um, it was a really huge opportunity. Somebody put my name forward and um, I had to apply and it was quite the process. And then, um, you know, I put my, my talk together and you have to go and you have to present. And there's, I think there was like a panel of four judges. It was kind of like being on Dragon's Den or Shark Tank. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of cool, but it was intimidating. And so then they critique you and they say, well, you need to add this, do this, pull this together, what, what have you. And then you do it again and then critique you again. <laughs> and really? um, yeah. And um, you know, it was, a fantastic opportunity. It was a very uh, humble. I was I was so excited and proud to be able to do that. But I'll tell you, it was a bit intimidating. I'm so glad I got the opportunity. Um, I I you tell people that first time my kids thought I was cool when I did a TED talk. They're like, Mom, you've done a TED talk. You're cool. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> finally. <laughs> true. Yeah. True story. So, and, but, and it's funny because when you tell a younger person you've done a Ted talk, they're like, oh, wow, really? <laughs> you know, they're so impressed because they know Ted talks. So uh -huh. it was a fantastic experience. I'm so happy I, I got the chance to do it. Um, but, um, it was, it was definitely an intimidating experience too, but uh, I loved it. I do it again. So let's, we're not finished there. Okay. <laughs> This is the mindset playground. So okay. let's talk about mindset. So now okay. you've already talked about your audition. Yes. And then you had to go back the next the next time and yeah. audition. Yeah. And so then what happened from there? Did they okay. like how did it work? So they called well, then you they, or... had, they cut they that well, yes. Yeah, so they told me I was accepted. Um and uh then they have a dress rehearsal. 
and you go back and you do it again. You know, you okay. talk. And then um, the day of, I'll tell you, I was pretty nervous. So we're all back. So it, it was one after another after another. Okay. They bring you on. Okay. It was, and um, one of the and things. Is there a I, time limit? Like, yeah, what's the... 18, the, the longest they can have is 18 minutes. 18 minutes is your max. Um, I had no desire to go 18 minutes because <laughs> I had to memorize it all. And I also thought if it's longer, I just thought if I kept it short, people would be more apt to listen to it. So it ended up being seven and a half minutes. And uh, I just, um, I remember standing backstage waiting for my name uh, to be to be called. And, and it was, and you walk out on stage and the bright lights and the, the people, there's, you know, a live audience. And um, I, a girlfriend of mine said to me, Teresa, when you walked out, I saw your eyes. It was kind of a deer in the headlights look for one second. And then you took a breath and you composed yourself and you knocked it out of the park. And I thought I did, I, I, for a second, I was like, <gasps> right. And then I went, okay, Teresa, you got this. And, and I did it. And I think I did a decent job and it was the topic I love talking about anyway, but, um, right. Yeah, it was a, it was a great experience. It really was. So you would recommend to people to actually go through it. Yeah, do it. Do it. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah hundred percent. If you get the opportunity, grab it. Yeah. Really? Uh, so yeah. how has it changed your life? Do you think? Um, I, I don't, I, I mean, it, it up to my, my, uh, cool factor for my, <laughs> my kids. Size. You know, I, I think that, uh, the fact it gives you credibility, right? It gives you credibility. You say, um, have that on your profile obviously and to have done that it gives you automatic credibility just like being an author right that gives you automatic credibility um so one of the things uh i talk about in the ted talk too is the bcp process which again is ivan meisner dr ivan meisner from bni visibility credibility profitability um and you have to be out there and and you are your brand and you need to remember that. So when you go to events, I wanted to bring this up earlier, you need to be on time. You need to be dressed properly. You need to not, it's called net networking, not net eating, drinking, or sitting. So, okay, you have a drink, but you have a drink. You don't have five drinks and you don't, you know, you got both hands full and you're trying to shake someone's hand and, you know, so you conduct yourself properly and that leads to your credibility. And then you follow up with people. And what I mean by that is hook up with them on LinkedIn, maybe go for a coffee, uh, maybe go for lunch, talk about your businesses more, build that relationship, and then it'll lead to networking, uh, sorry, to to hopefully doing business together. But that doesn't happen overnight, right? That no. could take months. So you need to have the patience too. So that was another point I did speak about at the TED Talk. Um, and uh, you said something not to do and something not to do is not show up with bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> and I say That's that because tip. we've always run, we've all run into that person, right? We have. And you're talking to people, you're close to people all night. You need to be aware of that too. Just like your body language, you need to be aware of that. So bring a mint, bring a piece of gum, bring something. But that's something not to do. And I just want oh. to reiterate, do not sell, do not sell, do not sell, do not sell at a networking event. How go in with the mindset, how can I help you? Yes. Okay. Cause everybody wants to know what's in it for me. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. The second, the second they hear anything at all about sales, they're mm -hmm. running the other way. Yeah, they are. And yeah. And the next time, and they'll remember you. <laughs> yeah, they'll remember you, but not for the right reasons. You want to be memorable, right? For the right yeah, right. Absolutely, yeah. that's so yeah. true. They don't yep. want to be as oh, here she comes. Yep, you know, and don't try and get them to join your team, and you know, don't say things like oh, you'd be a great salesperson for my product here. You know, this product, you'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, no, don't do any of that because no. again, if people want to know, that's what I found out. Okay. If people want to know what you're doing and how 
you got into it or why you got into it, they'll ask you. Yeah. They'll ask you. Yeah. And after a while, if you put stuff out there, they'll, they'll ask you. Mm -hmm. But if you just nonchalantly put it out there and, you know, just say, this is what I do. And, but you Jen, know, don't you find Luann generally, if you say to somebody, what do you do? They reciprocate and they say, well, what do you do? Right? Yes. Yeah. So, and be, I think be, that be inter authentically interested in other people. It comes back to yeah. you. Yeah. And I think you have to have your 30 second elevator pitch practiced. Yeah. Yes. Practice yes. It. Yeah. So that is a very important point. I'm glad you brought that up because you need to be able to explain to people what you do um, and make it understandable, right? Make it understandable that you understand what the person does. You need to be able to explain it quickly. Yeah. That's for sure. Teresa, as always, I love hanging with you. You too. Back at you. This was fun. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So would you recommend the mindset playground? Absolutely. This was great. Yeah. I enjoyed the, I, I enjoyed the experience and I enjoyed gabbing with you and hanging with you and talking about subjects. I love successful image and networking. Absolutely. So. And we'll have to do thank it again. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. So thanks for coming out on the playground today. And if anybody wants to get a hold of Teresa, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Oh, you can reach me at uh, Teresa at Successful-Image.com, 519-979-8888. Go to my LinkedIn page. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm on Facebook, you know, so. We'll have uh, Teresa's contact information on uh, YouTube when we do the replay for this show. So thanks again, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And to all my listeners out there, I just want to say thank you so, so much for joining us on the playground today. I know that you have things to do and it's always nice that you'll take the time out to watch our show. And I do appreciate you. So we'll be back next week at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with a new show. And it will be in the same place, the Mindset Playground. So thank you for watching. And if you're listening to the podcast, we're also located on iHeartRadio. And you can find all of the replays of all of my Mindset Playground shows on YouTube. And my handle is Luann Hunt, just like it shows in the screen here, Luann Hunt. And I will see you on the playground. Namaste. This has been the Mindset Playground with host Luann Hunt. Tune in each week for another daily dose of positivity right here on the Mindset Playground.